Hi everyone, very good evening. I'm Dr. Preeti Sharma and I'm an educator on the platform of Fun Academy. Today we are here with a very short session where we are going to discuss five spotters in approximately 5 minutes. So without any delay, let's begin right away. And the very first spotter that I have for all of you which I've tried to give you without a history is a classical histopath image that you get in the exam. And I guess I have also shared the PDF on the Telegram group so you guys know which spotters you had to identify the answer to this question is a schiller dual body now first and foremost schiller dual body has another name it is also known as the glomeruloid body and the tumor in which it is seen is a yolk sac tumor it's a tumor of the gonads that is it can occur in the ovary it can occur in the testes and this yolk sac tumor very classically shows us schiller dual or glomeruloid bodies and how did i identify this to be one so we have to identify schiller dual body by four layers let's label them the first one that we have in the center has to be a blood vessel so the first thing in the center is a blood vessel after that we have a row of i hope everyone can see these blue color cells these are the tumor cells yolk sac tumor right so these are the tumor cells then we have a whitish color space let me highlight it around it we have all around a white space so we label this thing as the space and then surrounding the space if you see we have another layer of bluish color cells so that happens to be another layer of tumor cells so from inside to outside what are the four layers of a schiller dual body blood vessel tumor space tumor repeating let's see an unlabeled picture blood vessel then tumor then space and then again tumor and that is what makes a schiller dual or glomeruloid body seen in yolk sac tumor that was spotter number 1 for the day spotter number 2 again something which will always come with a history but i hope that you are able to pick it up even without one and that is a certain pigment that you have to pick up from this picture now whenever this pigment will be given to you it will always be given to you with an elderly patient that will be mentioned or even a normal person just an elderly age of an 80 85 and very commonly 83 year old male or female is mentioned and if you look at the pigment first and foremost the color of the pigment it's a brown color pigment as i see over here and the location of the pigment is quite characteristic it's just around the nucleus so if you look very carefully this blue color cell the blue color aspect is the nucleus and the pigment is just around it so i can say that the pigment is perinuclear in location now whenever i have an old age mentioned and i have a brown color perinuclear pigment there is possibly just one answer that should come to our mind and that is lipofuscin now i have a little bit of a homework for all of you all of you need to type out in the comments below and let me know that what are the stains that are important for lipofuscin something that comes in the exam especially fmg students this is an all time favorite pigment that they put in your exam they'll always give you an elderly male or female a brown color perinuclear pigment and they can ask you the stain so i'll be looking out for the comments below okay coming to spotter number 3 it's actually a collage of three pictures either of the three can come separately or they can come all together like over here and this is actually to do with a microorganism known as this is a disease called hydated cyst how did i identify this to be a hydated cyst firstly uh, the organism the organism that results in a hydated cyst i think everyone knows it is echinococcus granulosus and how do i appreciate it under the microscope please remember you are calling it a hydated cyst right when i say cyst you have to see multiple cystic areas over here and please remember these cystic areas are very classically pearly white so remember in a hydated cyst you see pearly white cysts that are present second when i look at this cyst under the microscope under the microscope i get this kind of an appearance as if you know we've taken all of those who i'm sure in school and as kids you've done painting so with a paint brush when you put a stroke when we put up stroke with the paint brush it looks exactly like that right so this is primarily a paint brush appearance which is a very famous exam question as well that which organism is said to have a paint brush appearance under the microscope again that is echinococcus granulosus that is hydated cyst and lastly what do you see over here the 
hooklets of hydated so this picture over here this is said to be the hooklets please remember again something very very important all three pictures individually are quite important questions all three denote hydated since we are talking a little bit about microorganisms why not put the fourth one also on the same lines so this is uh, these are actually three eggs as all of you can see and all of them belong to the same species so which species do they belong to they belong to schistosoma now why did i call all of them to be schistosoma so i think all of us know one trick that schistosoma eggs are the eggs which have a spine right so uh, if i see there's a spine over here if i see there's a spine over here and there's a negligible kind of a spine over here so whenever i see a spinous egg i'm going to call it as the egg of s for s schistosoma further i need to know that which is schistosoma hematobium mansoni and japonicum so please remember the first picture what kind of a spine do we see we see a it's at the terminal it's at the tip of the egg so i call this a terminal spine see terminal has a t in it so when when in which organism will i see a terminal spine in schistosoma hematobium because hematobium has a t right so schistosoma hematobium shows a terminal spine next what is the next tag that i see again we see a spine over here but that is a lateral spine it's on the side it's not at the tip or the terminal part it's at the side that is lateral and we call it the egg of schistosoma mansoni so it is a man and sony is sleeping so it's a man who is so raha hai leta hua hai so lateral leta hua sota hua man is how we learn it so man sony sota hua man leta hua man so lateral spine schistosoma mansoni and finally schistosoma japonicum i can hardly see a spine over here so we call it a rudimentary spine and that is how we have learned all these together so repeating guys terminal in hematobium because it has a t lateral leta hua sota hua man so mansoni and rudimentary spine in schistosoma japonicum well that brings us to the last spotter of the day this is a pap smear that is exactly how the question will come to you this is a pap smear and this female has a long term usage of intra uterine contraceptive device intrauterine contraceptive device was inserted now her pap smear is showing you these kind of structures so what is this final answer this is said to be actinomyces i hope everyone even the history was quite suggestive in iucd users the kind of infection that you expect on a pap smear is actinomycosis and how did we identify actinomycosis it's got some characteristic appearance if you see they are all filamentous organisms right so lot of fancy names have been given to it because they look like the filaments of cotton so some authors call it cotton ball appearance because they look like the filaments of wool so it is known as woolly ball appearance then there are some people who also say that it looks like a bunch of dust primarily so they also like to call it dust bodies dust bodies is another name given to it and because of the scientist who discovered them they are also referred to as gupta body so all in all all of these are names of the same organism that is actinomycosis sometimes in pathology you also call it as the sun ray appearance i hope you know why because all these filaments can look like the sun so remember cotton ball woolly ball dust bodies gupta bodies all of these happen to be the name of the same thing that is actinomyces and that is seen in an iucd intrauterine contraceptive device user in a female on her pap smear this can be seen well as we had planned five spotters are done and we can wrap up for the day also guys i just wanted to update all the new kids on the block the students who just taken those Uh, steps and entered into MBBS. Uh, firstly, congratulations, and secondly, there's a new prof batch that is being launched for you. That is an at physio biochem and uh, classes and tests and doubt clearing sessions, PDF notes, recordings, all in all. everything will be taken care of along with the next pattern which is the pattern of exam that you would be appearing for so this is going to be launched very soon and also this is obviously for the students who want to focus on the first year subjects also for the exam going students who are nearing the who are at the terminal you know stage of their preparation for you guys there's an aimt all india mock test with an all india rank prediction that is going to be conducted on march 27th that is at 9 am in the morning 
Also, a lot of students used to ask me about where to study PYQs from previous year question bank. So that has also been launched. A dedicated section on the app is available where the past three year question papers are there with their solutions. And that is like all your PYQs in one place for all the subjects. So that should take care of students who are appearing for NEET, INICET or FMG. So all your PYQs are mentioned over here. Well, I guess we can wrap up and thank you for joining in i'll be also meeting you guys tomorrow morning so kickstart morning session as all of you know kickstart morning 7 30 a.m we will be meeting on the unacademy app and i hope you guys are up and awake early morning so a morning boost always helps us in get going through the entire day so yes meeting you tomorrow morning 7 30 a.m on the unacademy app thanks a lot for joining in guys all the best study well and good night